Hello everyone, you all probably clicked on this video because of the interesting, um, title. Abortion isn't black and white. Because it's not. And I recently realized this through talking with one of my family members. Who is, uh, actually pro-life. And they said, well, you know, if I was, if she, I, I knew a woman who was raped, huh? You know, I feel she's trying to have to be forced to take care of that baby. And I go, well, why take it out, uh, out on the baby? And she goes, well, I don't know if she can relate because you're not a female. But uh, that that emotional, you know, trauma, it, it really overrides the logical thinking. And I go, well, this I can relate because you I may not be a female, but I have been verbally traumatized in the past. Uh, there's actually, uh, the impact it had on me, had on me was so severe that there's actually not a day that goes by that I don't think of it. Um, and not that every time I think of it, it's the real the trauma, but still, that shows, uh, just how profound trauma can be. And, and that's verbal trauma. Uh, even verbal trauma can be catastrophic with, there was once a girl who, um, some, I was in school, and, uh, I heard the story with one of my teachers who said there was a girl who, uh, had something nasty said to her, and she wouldn't speak anymore, said they reached her close family, and there was a woman who, uh, heard something, uh, somebody said something to her, and she, uh, drove late at night down to a lake and lit herself on fire. So, yeah, and that's verbal trauma, so imagine... How emotionally devastating physical trauma is, especially something so intimate as, um, the R word. So, uh, yeah, it's just not black and white. And, uh, I, if you, I wrote down, you know, something which I'll, I'll put in at the end of this video. It's, this is just, just uh, facts and statistics, but I, statistics, but I end on them, you know, uh, a note of understanding that, that, uh, and that, you know, God's always with you and people are willing to help you if you seek it. So here it goes. If they say they're a Christian with our pro-choice, tell them they aren't saved. If they're against any of God's principles, they don't really want to follow Christ who are didn't. Him. Um, but the one who's speaking this or writing this down can relate to trauma and intense emotional instability. To clarify, if someone feels compelled to abort a baby conceived through rape, this doesn't mean they're pro-choice. It's similar to how you know the act of revenge is wrong, but you're still tempted to do it. It depends on how strong the emotion is and whether or not they give in to temptation. Likewise, a rape victim who is a pro-life Christian may very well battle temptation to abort her conceived baby. Because the trauma is so strong, it overrides the logical thinking and sympathy for the baby's life. It's just not black and white. Everyone must remember that God's presence is always freely available, and He knows every human thought. He never leaves you, nor forsakes you. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. So yeah, there you have it, Ice. It's just not black and white. And, um, you know, those, those women who do decide to abort their babies, sometimes they don't feel good about it afterwards. Sometimes they may feel guilty and, and it's just so tragic because it, you know, it wasn't their fault that, that happened to them. Now they might feel, you know, worse because they uh, aborted it. So, so yeah, and it's, the really difficult situation, all you can do is try to be there for them and, you know, comfort them and pray for them. Um, it, it, yeah, did, I can, I, I'm definitely an emotional person. I, I'm an INFJ. It's one of the most sensitive and emotional personality types. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, just be there for any people who, God forbid, this happens to them. And, 
You never know. Uh, baby might be a huge blessing to your life. And, uh, and a lot of those uh, pro-life speakers, they themselves were survivors of abortion. So that also explains why they're so, um, you know, against it. And they wouldn't be here right now. And, uh, some of them who survive end up with, uh, you know, a limp or a mangled face. So that, you know, that's your biggest, uh, um, your biggest fight or biggest facts to use against, you know, pro-choice and advocating for pro-life. And I don't have, I wasn't, I wasn't a abortion survivor. But I was born out of wedlock, and I, so I can relay a little bit, because, you know, if my parents didn't want me, they could have just, you know, said, well, uh, I don't want to have to care for this, for this baby, and aborted me, and, but they didn't, because they were, you know, moral, and they cared for me, though there was no trauma involved with, with them, so that was different. But still, I can, I'm saying I can relate to the gladness of being alive right now because I wasn't planned on, on coming to be by my parents. So yeah, um, yeah, uh, if there's, you know, we can be, uh, real nice in the comments. There's no need to be mean or anything. Um, this, uh, on screen, it's just, um, a ran one of my random characters, I just put him, her here for something to look at. But yeah, okay guys, God bless and may, and be with you in your households. Uh, spy, love you, spy. <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot to mention in the past, I did make some music videos, or music parodies, whatever you want to call them, um, that were kind of filled with hate against those pro-choicers who are more, you know, selfish and who don't think that, you know, life has value. Um, those of you, if any of you are listening, most of uh, many, if not all scientists agree that, um, life begins at conception. Okay. So, just gonna throw that, that out there. And all, and to all, um, remember those links, those three, Row convincing videos. Links are in the description. To, I suggest you check check them out. They're pretty neat. Um, I don't know if that's the right word I should use, but yeah. Anyway, uh, bye. God bless.